Hello, hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We are starting the last week. We are in the last week of this course. So we are almost done with all the topics that we have for this uh, module. So we are going to start with the first day of the week number four. So we are going to have four days um, to complete the course. So we are going to begin with the day one and we are going to have three more days to in this session, I mean this course. So it's almost the end for this month because it's like four weeks. So we have one month. So we are almost in the end of the course. So uh, this week we are going to have like four different, three different topics. But in this case, we are going to see one topic today and then we are going to see the other topic tomorrow but that topic is going to be in two days and then we are going to have a different topic on day number four so in this case we are going to have three topics for this last week so uh, we are like seeing just these kind of topics and in this case we are going to talk about the sequence adverbs so we are going to learn more about the adverbs, but in this case, we know that uh, what are the adverbs and we know how to use them. But in this case, we are going to see like another type of adverb that we are going to use because we know that we have a lot of uses for the adverbs. So in this case, we are going to see what are the sequence adverbs and um, the uses that we can give or in, what, in which situation we are going to use the sequence adverbs. And also we are going to see like some examples. And, uh, and also we are going to uh, have like, if we have time, we're going to do some exercises with this sequence adverbs. So we are going to begin because you know that I like to share with you some phrases at the beginning of the week. So we are going to start with that. I have a phrase for you today and we are going to read it. So in this case, we have this one. Let me move this a little bit. So here, we have this phrase and it says, success is a journey, not a destination. The doing is often more important than the outcome. So in this case, you know that in some cases when we know that uh, we have um, to follow a path or we have something to do. And in this case, the ending of that situation is not the it's not com complete all the action that we know that we need to do. In this case, is the way in which we are doing little things to complete the the big thing. In this case, we have a goal, and in this case, we know that we need to do a lot of things to complete that goal. So in that case, the success is the journey in which we were um, doing a lot of things to complete our main goal. So in that case, in, in it's more important to, to uh, enjoy the way in which we are doing the things to complete our main goal. So. We need to enjoy the things that we are doing right now. And in some cases, it can be something very bad or we feel that it is not the, the best thing, but you are learning something and you need to learn something with that, um, with that path, with that, with that travel in that case. So remember, success is a journey, not a destination. And the doing is often more important than the outcome. So you need to enjoy the things that you are doing in your life. So we have here the topic sequence adverse. So we are going to talk about sequence adverse and we are going to see what is a sequence adverse. We are going to see the examples or the words that we are going to use for these sequence adverse that they are words that we use 
almost every day when we are like speaking in English. And in some cases we use it like uh, in an unconscious way because we don't think too much in the use of those words. So we are going to see what are the uh, sequence adverbs and how can we use it to create like sentence or situations. So we're going to see. Let's see. Yes. So the first thing that we are going to see or we are going to learn uh, about the sequence adverbs are what are they? And also we are going to talk about the uses that we can give. So in this case, there are five types of adverbs in the English language. Sequence adverbs are used to describe the order in which two or more actions happen. Sequence adverbs include first, next, then, and finally. As I'm, I'm saying that we know what are the adverbs and in which cases we are going to use the adverb. But in this case, also, we have the sequence adverbs. So they are a type of adverb that we are going to use to describe the order. So in that case, it's describe the order in which two or more actions happen. It's like to make a list or to um, talk about steps in which we are doing something. So in this case, we are going to use it for that reason because we're going to use for um, describe the order or something. So I'm going to write the, um, the description of the sequence adverbs, and then we're going to see some examples and some explanation of those examples. And then we are going to see the exercises and all of the things. So here we have some words that we are going to use for this topic of the sequence adverbs. In this case, we have first, next, then, and finally. Those are very common words that we can use when we are talking or explaining something. So in that case, they are not um, new words. In this case, we already know that uh, those words. So when you are talking about something uh, or you are explaining the way you are doing something, you can include these words. First, I go to the, I go to the school. Next, I'm going to the supermarket. Then I buy some vegetables. And finally, I go to my house and make dinner, for example. When you're explaining these kind of actions or these kind of situations, you are going to use these, um, these sequence adverbs as this, the name said, because you are describing the sequence or the things that you are doing. And we have the first example. It says, if you want to make an omelet, you need to break the egg first. Next, you should heat the butter on a pan. Then you can add the eggs, finally, you can enjoy your omelet with your favorite vegetables or a piece of bread. In this case, we are like uh, talking about a recipe and we are like talking about an omelet. So in this case, we are explaining the steps to make 
that food. So in this case, we also, we are going to use the, the sequence adverb because we are explaining the steps to do this thing. So I'm going to write the example and you are going to see in which spaces we are going to uh, have these sequence adverbs. So you are going to see uh, how to use them. And it is very, very simple and easy to um, explain something using those words. Bien, así que básicamente para este tema eh, de los sequence adverbs son adverbios de secuencia que nos ayudan a nosotros a explicar mejor el orden en el que se llevan las cosas. En este caso tenemos el ejemplo del de omelette. And we are like, um, in this case we have four. Four eh, adverbs, tenemos cuatro adverbios que son los que vamos a utilizar para, eh, para explicar mejor las cosas que estamos haciendo. So we have first, next, then and finally. So in that case, we are going to work with those four eh, sequence adverbs. And in this example, we have that the sequence adverbs are used to describe the order of actions you need to take to make an omelet. In this case, we are explaining how to do it and, uh, and we are following like a, a way or some steps to make this thing. So we are going to talk about the rules that we have for this topic. And in this case, we have rule number one. And it says, we use a comma after sequence adverbs when they introduce the sentence that describe the action. If you are writing this sequence adverbs at the beginning of the sentence, you are going to write a comma, but just at the beginning of the sentence.
So in this case, we are like uh, seeing in which cases we are going to use the comma. Here we have the word next at the beginning of the sentence. And we are going to write comma next. I will show you how to toast bread. So in that case, when you are uh, like writing a sentence and you need to write the uh, advert at the beginning of that sentence, you are going to write the comma, but if the advert is at the end, it is not necessary. So in this case, it's just when you are beginning your statement. So that's the rule number one. And in this example, uh, we are like explaining or giving another step to doing something in this case, because we are talking about food. We are going to see the rule number two. So here we have the rule number two, and in this case is talking about the word first. So in this case, it's saying that uh, we use this word or this adverb um, to express that an action happens before any other, and it can replace it at the beginning and the end of a sentence. So in this case, obviously we are like knowing that in this case, when we are using first, is because we are talking about something that happened at the beginning. It is the number one. So, and in this case, we can use a first at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. So in this case, it is not like we are going just to have a, a specific place in which you are going to write the word first, because in this case, it is not necessary just to write at the beginning. You can also write it at the end of the sentence, but give me one second. I'm going to do something, so give me a moment. In that case, you have two places in which you are going to write this word. Así que eh, para la regla número dos, está hablando de la palabra first o primero. Y eh, tenemos dos lugares en los que lo vamos a escribir. Al principio o al final de nuestra oración. Así que eh, en este caso sí se puede mover al final de la oración para poner esta palabra. So, we are going to see the example of this one. Because we have two examples, one with the word at the beginning of the sentence and the second one with the word at the end of the sentence. So we are going to see the examples of this rule number two.
So in these examples, we have the same situation. In the first one, we are saying that first, we need to have a cup of coffee before I start to work. In that case, I'm going to work, but first I need to take a cup of coffee because um, I need to wake up or I need energy to do my work. So in the first sentence, we have the word first at the beginning, uh, followed by a comma, and then we have our sentence. First, I need to have a cup of coffee before I start my work. In the second one is the same situation, but with a little bit of changes. I have a lot of work to, do, to finish today, but I need a cup of coffee first. So we are saying that we are going to have a lot of work to do, but we need a cup of coffee first to complete all the things that we are going to uh, uh, do in our job. So in this case, we have the same situation, but with a little differences in the way we write our sentence. So in this case, it is like, saying in which spaces or in which cases we can write uh, first at the beginning or at the end of the sentence. So in this case, we have two examples that explain the rule number two. So in the first sentence, we are saying that we need the coffee before work. And in the second one is that the coffee be the same, the, the coffee it comes before work and then we are going to start working. So we have a rule number three. And in this rule, it says that we use next to express that action happens immediately after another action or as soon as possible. It can also come both at the beginning and the end of the sentence. So next, in this case, is like first because we are going to use it at the beginning of the sentence or at the end. So in this case, we have two spaces in which we can write the word next. So, so in this case, it's not like we're just going to see it at the beginning of the sentence. In this case, we have at the beginning and at the end of the sentence.
So here we have the two examples of this rule number three. And in this case, you can see that um, we are using an X at the end of the whole sentence, or we are like uh, using the word an X in the middle. In this case, it's like we have two parts of the sentence and we are using an X in the beginning of the second part of the sentence. So in this case, it's not like at the beginning, beginning of the same sentence that you are writing. In this case, it's like uh, writing it in, we can say it in the second clause of this sentence because it's like forming that kind of a, a structures like with the clauses. So in this case, you are going to use an X in the beginning of the second clause or the second part of the sentence. So we have the first example and it says, I'm eating a breakfast now. I will clean the kitchen next. And in this case, next is a sequent adverb to, uh, used to express that an action of cleaning the kitchen comes right after breakfast. So in this case, we are talking about that we are going to egg breakfast be, um, in the first place. And then we are going to clean the kitchen next because in that case, we are like uh, finishing the uh, food that we prepare. So in that case, uh, is the kitchen is ready to be clean. So it's not like we are going to say that we are going to clean the kitchen first and then we are going to eat because we are going to have something dirty for um, the afternoon, for example, or something like that. So in this case, we are going to eat the breakfast and then we are going to clean the kitchen. And in the second one, uh, we say, I went to Toscana this summer. Next, I want to visit Napoli as soon as I can. So in this case, it is used to express that visiting Napoli will become as soon as possible after visiting Toscana. So in this case, it's not like right after, but we have the idea to go to that place. So in that case, we can use next to say that is the next place that we are going to visit in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, uh, in a month or something like that. So in that case, we are talking about the place that we are going to visit next. Then we have the rule number four. We're going to see what is the rule number four and the examples.
So in the rule number four, we have the word then. In this case, we can use a then to express that action happens after another action if it is not immediate. We can use and then without a comma. So in that case, we are going to use just the word then or we are going to use the expression and then. And in that case, when you are using and then, you are not going to write the comma because in that case you are using and, so it is not necessary to write the comma. And we have two examples and we have the first one that it says, I'm going to visit Napoli this fall. Then I want to explore the French Riviera. And we have here that there is no destination and time frame is specified. So the speaker probably want to go to the French Riviera right after coming back from Toscana. In such case, we use a then. So in this case, it's like when you have plans to go uh, somewhere, but um, you are not like saying, I'm going to that place the next month. So in that case, you have just the idea to go there, but you want to do it. But in, not in this moment, like we can say that we are going to do it maybe next month or maybe next year. So in that case, we are going to use then to explain that idea that we have about the place that we want to visit. So in this case, we are talking about that situation. And we have the second example in this one set. She will finish her coffee and then she will continue with working tasks. So in this case, we are saying that uh, we don't know if she will start working on her tax immediately after finishing her coffee. In such a case, we use and then. So we know that she is going to, to drink her coffee. And no, we know that she is going to continue working because we know that that is the thing that she is um, going to do because she's working, she is in, in her place to work. But we, are, we don't know if she is going to uh, begin working uh, when she finish her coffee or she is going to take like a couple of minutes to begin working. So in that case, we're going to use and then because we are not sure in which time she is going to continue with her job. So in this case, we have two uh, sentences in uh, we are going in this case in which cases we are going to use a then one is for uh, planes or plans that we have in ese caso es como hacer un plan pero no estar extremadamente seguro si lo vamos a hacer de manera inmediata y el otro es no saber con exactitud si se va a comenzar inmediatamente se termine una acción vamos a comenzar la otra so we have the last rule and it's rule number five. We're going to write rule number five in the examples. And then we're going to have a couple of uh, exercises in which we are going to um, put into practice the information that we have about the, uh, the sequence adverbs. But don't worry, I'm going to give you a feedback of the five rules. And then we are going to begin with the, um, the exercises. So we are going to see rule number five.
rule number five. In this case, we have the last rule for the sequence adverbs. And we have the rule that it says, we can use finally to express that action happens at the end after any others or after a long time. We can use finally before the verb without a comma. So in this case, when we're using the verb next to the finally, we are not going to use the comma. But when we're going to write it like at the beginning of the second part of the sentence, we're going to write a comma. So in this case, we have three different uh, examples in which we are going to have like different interpretation or meaning for those uh, examples. So in the number one, after 20, after 20 years together, we finally got married. So in that case, we are talking about a long time. In this case, it's something that happened after a long time. So in that case, we finally got married. Then we have the second one and this one said, I've worked all day, finally. I can go to bed. So in this case, we are talking about that. We are expressing that uh, something happened at the end of the day. So we have work all day and then it's time to go to bed. So we are ending the day in that way. And the number three, I've worked all day, cleaned the house, cook a meal for tomorrow and I finally went to bed. So in this case, we are uh, using this adverb to express an action that happens after any others because we have like a list of things that we did during the day and then we are going to go to bed. So in that case, finally, we are going to go to the bed. So in that case, is the ending of all the action that we perform in the day. So in this case, we have this topic that is a kind of short because it is not complicated and we have information about the adverbs. And, and we can say that we have previous knowledge about the, ad, the adverbs. So in this case, we are just using four words. We have just four words to work with this uh, topic. That is first, next, then, and finally. So in that case, just four words. And with uh, those words, we can create like, sequence of things. We can talk about recipe, we can talk about actions that we are performing. Uh, we can explain some things that we did in the day or during the day and all of that thing. So, tenemos cuatro palabras nada más que vamos a utilizar con los sequence adverbs, que son esos adverbios de secuencia. Ya decíamos que tenemos el first, el next, el then y el finally. Con esas cuatro palabras tenemos cinco reglas. In this case, we have like the first rule in which we can use all the adverbs that we have. And in that case, we are using the four to describe a, the sequence or, or something. In the example, we have like a recipe, but it is not like we are just going to use recipe to use the four of these adverbs. You can explain how to create something. Uh, you can explain um, the details or uh, the uh, steps to perform something. So in that case, you are going to use four uh, adverbs or sequence adverbs to explain that things. Then we have in the rule number two, uh, the uses first. So we know that first it, uh, it is at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. When you are explaining that the thing that you are doing is the first thing of the list. Then we have the number three. And in this case, we are going to use next that also we can use it at the beginning or at the end. And in this case is when you are talking about an action that happens after another one. And in this case is that you are doing that action as soon as possible. Then we have the rule number four, and in this case is related to uh, the use of then. And in this case, it's when you are like to explain or express that action happens after another one, but in this case, it's not like 
uh, you are doing as soon as possible. In this case, it's like an idea to do that action uh, after. So in that case, it is not talking about a very quick thing to do. And the last example, I mean, the, the, the last rule is the use of finally. In this case is when you are expressing an action that is at the end of any other a action that you are performing or it's something that happened after a long time and you are uh, waiting for that situation to happen. So in th this case is like, we are going to use this for that reason. So we have this explanation, we have some examples and now we are going to use that information to create some examples or some things that we are going to see. We have uh, four exercises in this case and we are going to see, I have like an image here. So let me take that image to the top of the document. So I have here, activity number one. Here we are. So in this case, we have this image. Let me do it a little bit like this, bigger. So in this case, we have four images. And in this case, you know that we are like talking about a case of flood. In este caso es una situación de inundación. So um, in that case, we need to, to write the sequence of things that we need to do during that emergency. So we're going to write this, this sentence in which we are going to do the action. You have the example of the images in which you can say, uh, first we need to do this, then we are going to do that. Next, we are going to perform that action. And finally, we are going to do this. So think about the things that we can do during a, um, in a case of blood or in a case of this kind of emergency. And you are going to write the sequences or the sentences on the chat. And I'm going to uh, choose the best one for this situation. Así que vamos a escribir las cuatro oraciones de qué podemos hacer en un caso de inundación, en un caso de, de ese tipo de emergencia. Y voy a escoger las cuatro que estén más acorde con las imágenes que tenemos ahí. So, I will give you a couple of minutes to think about this, the, the sentence that you are going to write. And then I will tell you um, when you can write uh, the sentence. And then I'm going to read all the sentences and we are going to write four of them that are using uh, the four sequence adverbs. So you have a couple of minutes right now and you can write uh, your sentence after that. So think about them.
me on the chat. And I'm going to read the sentence and we are going to have the four sentences on the screen. So I have some here. Okay, good one. I'm going to write your sentence here. That one is another uh, good uh, sentence. We have the first one that is, first, you need to have an emergency number in case you are in trouble. Or we can say, and I'm going to write it in number one too because it's a good one, that we can say, first, keep calm. That is a very, very good one. Okay, we are going to need more sentences, but in this case, using next, then, and finally. So we need this sentence to complete the first part. Ah, good, good. That is a good one. Next, search for a safe place. I have here another one that is very good, but I'm going to uh, wait for another one to see if we can write uh, or make a better one, or I'm just going to write it the way it is. Okay, I'm going to complete this with the information that we have on the chat. So I'm going to like replace something and we are going to add something. So let's see. We are going to have two possible um, beginning of instruction in this case. First, keep, uh, keep or stay in calm. Or we can say first, you need to have an emergency number in case you are in trouble. Next, and I'm going to change this one. And we can say we have like, in one of these description, we have uh, go out of the house. So in this case, I'm going to write next, go out of the house. Then, 
search for a safe place and finally but in this case mm, we're going to like wait for the 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 word to disappear so in this case we're going to do it at the end of the end of those uh, situations so we're going to see finally Finally, you check your house at the end when this situation happened. So in this in this case, we can say that uh, the the three first the sentence is uh, during this situation. And the last one is when all of the things uh, end in. So in the first case, we have first keep or stay calm and have emergency numbers in case you are in trouble. Next, go out to the house, then search for a safe place. And at the end, finally check your house. So in that case, we're using a four a sequence adverbs in which we can like, a use for this kind of things. So I have another one, but in this case, I'm going to uh, show you in which uh, way we can write those sentences. So this one is a case of flood, but we are going to see uh, this one that is um, tornado. But in this case, we are just going to write the uh, sentence because it's time to end the session. So I'm just going to write you the sentence in which we can use this one. So there we have the instructions when you are like on a tornado and the things that you can do. So this is the end of this uh, topic. It is like a very short topic and we are going to see another topics tomorrow. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to have three more days to end this course. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.